Hi, I'm Jade Abishan, one of the co-news directors here at KHTS Radio, and I'm here, part of a series where we're interviewing local spouses of our Santa Clarita representatives. I am here, very happy to see Mrs. Vanessa Wilk, the wife of Senator Scott Wilk, and also, I believe, the district director for Assemblyman Scott Lackey. So you've got a lot of things on your plate. I do. I How do. are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you very much for coming in. Some people might not be so familiar with you guys. Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and your family? Okay, well, um, Scott and I moved here to Santa Clarita back in, I think it was 1990. So our kids have gone to school here. Um, we've been here a long, long time. We've been involved from everything from PTA to um, the senior center to uh, from little kids to older kids to Scott was on the board of trustees at College of the Canyon. I serve as a, a art commissioner for the city of Santa Clarita. So we've been here a while. In um, 2012, Scott was elected um, for the 38th assembly and he became the assemblyman. And then in 2016, he became um, the senator for the 21st district. And yes, I work for Assemblyman Tom Lackey, who's a 36th district, and he has little bits of Santa Clarita, but it's mostly Antelope Valley and Acton and that area. But he does have some parts of Canyon Country as well as unincorporated areas of Saugus. You're very involved in the Santa Clarita Valley, both you and your husband, we on a are. lot of levels. We love Santa Clarita. Was that something that Scott always wanted to do, or was that a new thing for you guys once he started getting involved? always wanted to do. I would say, I don't know if necessarily he always wanted to be an elected official, but he definitely always loved government and politics. In fact, he tells a story about when he was a little boy, he grew up in Lancaster, which is kind of cool because now he represents that area. And he used to ride his bike down to Republican headquarters and stuff envelopes for Richard Nixon when he was a little kid. And um, he'll also tell you about when his family took a vacation to the Capitol when I think he was about 11 and um, he went to the Senate floor and he stood up and he looked and he said, someday I want to be here. And here he is now later. So it was something they always wanted to do. And we actually met on the campaign trail. So um, I knew that something like this would be in our future. That's amazing going all the way from being a boy dreaming of that and now he's the Republican Senate leader in California. That is very, cool. very, very impressive. Yeah. That's awesome. So moving into public service, that's a very big thing. How did your and your family's life change when that happened? Well, I think we've always been involved and we've always felt like, you know, this is our community, so we're going to be involved, but it just kind of kicked it up a lot. Um, we are always busy. Uh, obviously, the pandemic has changed that. But um, wherever we can be, we are. We feel like uh, Scott and I have always felt, whether it be on the campaign trail or just in serving, that people can't demonize you if they know you and they get to know you. So we, I feel like we're everywhere. We're getting to know people. And, and we really have a feel for the community and what they want and what they're looking for in their elected officials. So um it's been it's been an honor. I have to say it's it's really been an honor and it's been wonderful to be able to go everywhere and meet with people and um luckily our kids were older when Scott was elected um to the assembly. I don't know how younger people with younger families do it because he's gone. He leaves on Monday. Um, and then he comes back on Thursday and he's in Sacramento. So I think it would have been a lot harder had our children been younger, but um, it's been it's been wonderful. Were there any unique challenges with your guys' new role or even your new role as a spouse of an elected official that really stood out to you? For me, it's kind of, you know, keeping everything in perspective because all of a sudden everyone wants to be around you, especially Scott, you know, all of a sudden he's really funny and he's really handsome and he's very bright. I feel like we've got a good handle on that, knowing that, you know, who we are and, and what we're all about and kind of keep that all in check. What is your favorite part of your role as the spouse of a local leader? 
I'm just really proud of him. I think he he does an amazing job. And for me, it's it's really fun to see him in his element when he's really excited about a bill or something happened that he, he was able to pass. I'm Armenian and um, this makes me very emotional, but when he first was elected in the assembly, um, he, as well as two of his colleagues, started the Armenian caucus in Sacramento. And that was amazing for me. And, and to see him speak on the assembly and Senate floor about the genocide. They have a special scholarship that they do for students that write about the Armenian genocide. People say to me all the time, I, I didn't even know about this. So that has been the best part for me is just being able to make a difference and do things that we probably wouldn't have been able to do. He's definitely been a force in making sure that people are aware, at least here in California, of the Armenian genocide, which considering the fact, I mean, isn't it Glendale or Burbank that has the largest population yes. of Armenians outside of Yeah. It, it's amazing to me personally that more people don't know about it. Yes, me too. Speaking of, you know, keeping things in perspective, what's some guidance that you give your spouse? I think what happens is a lot of times um, elected officials end up going to Washington or Sacramento and um, they're surrounded by people. They forget that, you know, we're here. I think I have a good way for him of always saying, oh, this is what's going on in our community. I mean, he has people that do that for him, but it's different when it's coming from your spouse. And I don't think he, he'll ever forget where he came from, or I, I don't think that that love for Santa Clarita and to do what's right for his constituents, I think that's something that he strives to do. And together, I think we're a really good team. We both have a love for our community, and I think he's the right person at the right time um, for this job. It's more about not so much making sure that you guys don't lose connection, more about making sure that that connection stays alive and keeping it constant and active. Exactly. Last year, last year was pretty wild in terms of COVID and it was an election year. How did that impact you and your family? Well, um, COVID was, when it first hit, it was incredibly scary as everyone knew. We were actually in Sacramento getting ready for the KHTS bus trip. And um, it was canceled, of course, and it, it's always Scott's birthday. Um, March 16th is his birthday, so we were going wine tasting. And Gavin Newsom announced um, the closure of all the wineries and the restaurants Why we were at a winery drinking wine. So we kind of, you know, put down our glass and off we went. And um, it, it, we rented a car. We were supposed to... Um, fly back home. Scott was given a briefing by the governor about what was about to happen, and it was really scary. So we uh, rented a car rather than hop on an airplane, and we came home. And I remember being in my home thinking, okay, because we were always on the go. We were always weekends, evenings, during the during the weekdays. Um, I thought this will be a good opportunity to just kind of relax and, and put on your sweatpants and and read a good book or watch all the smutty shows that you, you know, don't get a chance to watch or whatever it may be. And um, I thought this will be kind of nice for a week or two. I never in my wildest dreams, I'm sure everybody else thought that a year later, we were still going to be um, home. Uh, it's been challenging being on the campaign trail, so to speak, uh, without being able to meet people because that is so important to be able to talk to people one-on-one -on -one to understand what they're thinking and, and what their expectations are. So that's been really hard, but we've learned to Zoom. We've learned to... Um, you know, a lot of phone calls, a lot of, it was my, I don't want to announce this, but it was my 60th birthday. We did a drive-by uh, parade for me. And so we've just learned to um, come up with ideas that were creative to get our word out and, and to kind of keep in touch with the community. It's been challenging. Especially with trying to learn all of these new things, how do you cope with that stress of the election and the campaign and COVID altogether? How did you and your family cope with that? I think over the years, uh, Scott's uh, election to the assembly was in uh, 2012. And before that, he had elections to the COC board. And 
the way elections were, campaigns and politics were back in, you know, 2008 and 2012 is so different than how it is now. And that's been really hard for me because I take everything personally and you can't do that. Um, but I think with social media, people are, are just say things behind their keyboard that they would never say to your face. And uh, it's been really hurtful to me. I've learned to kind of step back and try not to take things personally. I, I've definitely learned not to respond. Um, but I'm fiercely loyal and I love my family and I love my friends. And when people say things that I know aren't true, I immediately want to go on there. And, you know, whether it be a someone who's running for office that I support or or my husband or whatever it may be, I want to respond. I don't anymore. Uh, I've learned how to deal with this new kind of campaigning that I don't particularly like. I think it's it's mean and horrible, but I have faith in just people, people's reputations, they're good. And I think you can rely on that. I think, you know, hopefully you don't believe everything you read on social media, but it's been tough. It's been really hard being on the campaign trail um, with the whole social media aspect of it. So besides the complete shutdown and the change of campaigning, how else has COVID-19 affected you and your family? Well, we don't take anything for granted anymore. I just, I'm, like I said, I'm Armenian. I have a large Armenian family and we're very loud and we're big and everybody's always together around the dinner table and we have not been able to do that. It was um, bizarre last, you know, Easter and, and Christmas and Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, I bought a turkey that, you know, was like 10 pounds. I usually buy like a 28 pound turkey. Um, so it's been, we don't take any of that for granted anymore. As things are slowly opening up, I, we, my 94 year old mother lives with us. She's now fully vaccinated. I'm halfway there. Uh, our son is vaccinated. So as we're slowly starting to, to be together again, I will never take that for granted. Cause you always think, you know, your doors open, everybody's going to come in and out. And the isolation has been really hard. It's just, FaceTime is not the same and not being able to hug. I'm a really huggy person. And for Scott, he, you know, basically the legislature, uh, they were out for much of last spring. They went back in the summer for about a month, but that's been really hard too. So, Cause how do you keep things in check from your, you know, office in your home? So uh, it's been really difficult. Uh, we will never take any of those freedoms for granted again that's for sure what's something you're looking forward to in 2021 things opening back up again for sure um i'm looking i'm i'm you know my husband we were just talking about was recently named leader of the um of the republican caucus which is a a big deal and i'm so proud of him i can't think of anybody better for the job so i'm looking forward to that challenge to just seeing how he takes that on and and hopefully turns things around for for our party and for our state uh looking forward to going to events again i'm i'm on the arts commission it would be nice to be able to they've done an amazing job by the way the art community um doing classes through zoom and Everything that they've had to deal with, leave it to artists to come up with creative ways to entertain people. But I'm looking forward to going out again, to eating in restaurants, to going to shows, or the Lemley Theater. I've been waiting for years. It'll be nice to finally go to a show and, and just hopefully everybody staying healthy and, and having this COVID in the rear view mirror. So is there anything you'd like to talk about that we haven't gone over or anything you'd like people to know that maybe if this is their first time seeing you, you'd like them to know about you? I love our community. Uh, we're an amazing, giving, loving community. Um, for me, I just, I, I enjoy what I do and proud to serve on the Arts Commission, proud to serve on the, on the Senior Center um, board and uh, just love Santa Clarita and am honored to be the first lady of the 21st Senate District. Thank you all very much for joining us. And thank you. Thank you.